Bible said, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lift up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. <coughs> Thanksgiving. Mentioned some 140 times in the Bible. Thanksgiving. From the thankfulness of David in Psalms 103, to the thankfulness of Daniel in Daniel 16, to the thankfulness of Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. We'll look at some lessons on thankfulness from the lepers. Jesus meets ten. And then one of them one of the ten will become very soon after meeting Christ becomes a thankful man. Thank, that, it's all about thanksgiving today. And what we should do and what we should be throughout the year that is so thankful to God for the life that He allowed, for the life that He granted me. Now, what I've done with it is strictly up to me. But God has granted me blessing after blessing after blessing, and it's certainly my choice to do as I see fit. Now, there were ten. There were ten lepers. They were cleansed. There were ten. And as they went, it says, Jesus said, after them crying out for mercy, Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. Now why did he say that? Because the priest was the only one at that time given the authority to acclaim them cleansed and clean. Only the priest could do that. Uh, that's why Jesus sent them to the priest. And when they began to leave, and when they made their first step of obedience towards getting to the priest, they were healed. The cleansing came. The cleansing came. I want you to look, I'm going to look at about three different uh, <coughs> subjects here that are covered that I believe could bring you to an altar of repentance today to change your life as it changed the life of these lepers. The lepers called for Jesus. When he saw the lepers, as he entered the village, the Bible said they stood afar off. Now, you had to, uh, if you had leprosy at that time, uh, you had to stay at least 100 foot from anybody, and if anybody started to approach you had to stand there and, and proclaim, unclean, unclean, unclean. Don't come towards me or don't get any closer to me. I'm unclean. I have leprosy. Don't come any closer to me. That was the commandments out of the book of uh, the law. And, and, and all of them that were of leprosy, or that had leprosy, knew this. Uh, but when they saw Jesus, they had heard of his great miracle working power. And when they saw him, they knew immediately that if they cried for mercy, he would grant it. He would grant, and listen, 
To be merciful to a leper, if you have the power to do so, would be to cleanse the leper. Uh, to rid him of this horrible disease. So they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, I, I want to tell you, right now we can close. We can give the invitation. There is enough been preached now. Uh, the power of the Word of God is immeasurable. So there have been enough preached now that if you were here lost, if you here and don't know Christ as Savior, there has been enough Bible preached to you this morning that the Holy Spirit can come to you and make you understand today that you're a lost sinner in need of a Savior. Yeah. Unclean, unclean, unclean. That's what we all were before we were saved. Remember this. This is just simply a picture, a type of all men uh, that are separated from God. We're all unclean. We were all born in sin. And we all need a Savior. So if it's not uh, the lesser or the greater, it's everybody on the same level, the same playing field. But everybody that does not have Christ today needs to make that decision. Amen. And cry out for mercy. <coughs> cry out for mercy. You to think about this. The leper pictures the sinful state of all of us. All of us. Same thing. Our Lord is rich in mercy. The Bible says in Lamentation, His mercies are new every morning. Listen, if God granted you mercy today and God reached into your life and worked a miracle and granted mercy for you, listen to me, He's not going to run out. His mercy is renewed every day. Day, he got a brand new batch of mercy. Well, I missed yesterday's mercy. It's coming again today. You'll have the same opportunity today to reach out for God's mercy. Hey, you turned him down last time. Don't worry about it. He's got plenty of mercy. He's got plenty of mercy. If you'll call on him, he will grant mercy in your life and he will bring the healing of your soul to you. All you have to do is cry out for mercy. Uh, and I know as we're building up to this, uh, uh, the crescendo, the end of uh, this message, we're moving towards, hey, what happened to the other nine? And why weren't they thankful like the one stranger was? Get into that in just a minute. And I know that's where our mind's headed, but I want to kind of hold back and, and try to absorb some of the things that God is teaching us. These lepers had many things in common with us. They were separated from God. They were afflicted with the same disease. All have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So uh, when Jesus uh, says that, or when Paul writes it uh, in the book of Romans, when that is written out, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's simply a picture of all ten of these lepers were in the same condition. Uh, no one higher or lower, like I said, no one more privileged than the other. Simply on the same playing field. Just as we are here today, gathered together, we're all on the same field, uh, the same level as far as God's concerned. And we're all in need of the same thing. A touch from the Master. Just a touch from the Master would take care of What's wrong in my life? What's wrong in my life? And those of you that have tasted of that, that have known that in the past, and have walked off, you remember right now very well what it was like when you walked in the presence of God. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, there are certain things that you don't ever forget in your life uh, that have happened to you. And there's one thing that man, uh, humanity, can never forget is if they ever get in the presence of the Master. I don't care how far you go or how far you fall 
or how big a mistake you made or how disobedient you become or how much your life has fallen apart. If you've ever spent any time in the presence of the Master, you'll never forget it. Amen. You'll never forget it. Uh, so I want you today to spend some time in the presence of the Master. I can tell you right now, if time allowed, if time allowed, and you were confined to this room, if you were confined to this room, no one would leave here lost. If God's will were accomplished today in your life, you would leave here saved. On your way to heaven, and those of you that already knew God, you would be reassured about the presence of God in your life. God would never fail to show you that. Every one of you could be compelled by the Holy Spirit to come home. Those of God's children that are here and that are wayward in their life and that have moved out away from God. God is constantly calling you. God is constantly calling you home, trying to get you to come back. Every day of your life, I want you to, you, please admit this, please admit this, if you are a child of God, there is a constant tugging and a reminding of who you are and who God is and where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing and there's a constant tugging on your heart and you can't live in any kind of peace. I mean, you may create some artificial peace for a moment, temporarily, but you're going to be brought back to that. Oh my goodness, I need to get back to the Master. I need to get back to whatever's wrong in your life. We need to get back to the Master. So let me get my point. Number one is this. The lepers <coughs> called to Jesus. Same thing. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner lost in need of a Savior. I know it. What would I have to do to be saved, Brother Jimmy? Call on the Master. Call on the Master. Master, help me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. When they cried for mercy, the healing started right then. And as they became obedient and headed towards the priest, their cleansing took place. Now, I said there were ten. There were ten. One of the ten, as he moved away, tracking the same track as the other nine did, he began to look at himself and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I never thanked the Master. I never said thank you, Lord, for what. Listen, when you were a leper, when you were a leper, when you get up tomorrow morning, if you were in this condition today, tomorrow you may wake up and your ear has fallen off, or your nose have fallen off. Or your digits, your fingers, have begun one by one to fall off. Every day, there was more misery in your life. And when they began to take their steps towards the cleansing, towards the priest, then they began to be healed immediately. So you think that's some small thing. Listen, you to think about if you were sitting in your living room and you look and, oh my goodness, another finger had fallen. Or you looked in the mirror and your nose was gone. Your ears were gone. And all your extremities began to crumble and fall off. And the skin on your body just began to melt away. Melt away. That's a serious issue. No more serious than you sitting here today lost, Amen. losing your opportunities Amen. to Amen. ever be saved. You're losing them constantly. They're falling away. Uh, they're falling away. And 
your hope uh, for eternal salvation is moving further and further away. But today it is brought all the way in to this room. All the way into this room. Uh, the power to save uh, is brought. The power to recover. The power to be okay. The power to heal uh, is here today. Thank God that that power is here today. You're not, you're not alone. Uh, you're not without hope. Uh, you're not uh, without remedy. There is a remedy uh, here today uh, for what's wrong in your life. Uh, there's a remedy. There's an end uh, to the heartache, to the pain, to the sorrow, to the hurt, for the loneliness, or whatever it may be. Whatever that, whatever that Satan is using. And he has all kinds of tactics uh, to destroy you with. But whatever he's using today in your life, you can be delivered from. Just like the leper. When they saw Jesus and cried out for mercy, their healing began. And then the one said, wait a minute, I was not thankful. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that in these 2017, uh, uh, the year uh, that's gone on this past, my God, what has happened to our country uh, in just a small three or four or five past years. Digit after digit is falling off and falling off. And we're about to become unrecognizable uh, as a country that loves God. A country that was founded upon the principles of the Bible. We're losing all of it one by one by one. And the misery uh, is continuing and increasing. So I want to encourage you that not only should you call on Jesus, but remember when your call uh, goes out, there's a purpose. There's a purpose in your call. Uh, there is those of you uh, that are now, right now, if you don't do anything else, you don't do anything, you don't do anything, you're on your way to hell. And if you were to die today, you would be there. But that's not the issue. Listen to me. Every day that you're lost, every day that you reject Christ is a day that you spent on your way to a devil's hell. You've got to put a stop to that journey or you're going to wound up there and the days to do something about it, are going to be gone. They're going, that one day, one day, it's all going to be gone. The opportunity to be cleansed, to be saved, is going to be lost. <clears throat> so you're looking for a cleansing. A salvation, a rescue, a deliverance from yourself, from the world, from, from the pits of hell. You're looking for deliverance. He's here. Those of you that have drifted out there trying to wing it, trying to handle this by yourself, you're losing the battle. You're losing the battle. You've got to call on the Lord today to be cleansed, to be renewed, to be refreshed in the Spirit. So, so I want to challenge you as you call and as you wait on the deliverance to come, don't be discouraged. Uh, don't be put off and saying it's not going to happen. When you believe, when you truly call, when you get serious with God, it begins to happen. Right then. The healing starts immediately. When you get serious with God. The last point, the first one was, I got a call on Him. And the second one was, I'm doing this for a purpose. Either I'm lost and on my way to hell, and I want to change that, and I want to know that heaven's mine. Or I'm so far off that I need to be drawn back. And then the last is this. The last is this. 
The leper who was faithful. My point a while ago when I said I think the church courts the country in, but even down to the church has become unthankful. We have become unthankful for what God has done for us. And then when we become unthankful, then it begins to fall apart one digit at a time. We can stop that the moment we cry out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. I think there is a nine that is traveling away from God that are no longer thankful for what God has done. They have become so used to following the process that they no longer desire the presence of a holy God. They simply want to create and accomplish the process. And they leave the master out. The other man kept on walking. They were cleansed. I personally don't believe they were saved. I, I believe they were cleansed because he said, if you'll go show yourself to the preacher, he'll never go back on his word. He'll never go back on his word. And they were cleansed. And, and, the, and the priest uh, announced they were clean. But the one that was thankful that came back was saved. That carried through. I, I think a lot of people uh, that were saved in, 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 in past years of their life, they have become so unthankful that they don't ever feel the presence of God. Why the lepers gave thanks is he had hopelessness and then immediately he had hope. He had hope. He had homelessness and immediately he had a home to go to. See, he, he was cast out. You couldn't stay at your home. You had to leave your family. You had to go live outside of the city, out of the lepers camp. You couldn't even you couldn't even associate any longer with your family. So now they had a home he could go to. He was homeless and hopeless. And he had been rejected for what was wrong in his life. And now he had been received back. Back into the fold. I want you today. We close the message. I want you today to think where you're at with God. To become <coughs> thankful. And do not satisfy yourself with just the process. Oh yeah, I'm saved. Yeah, 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 I've, I've done that. I mean, I'm not really doing anything for God. I mean, I, I'm saved. Quit being satisfied with so little of what God's got. God's got all of heaven for you. He's got the abundant life. He's got peace beyond understanding. Uh, when you can stand uh, where your life has crumbled at and say, thank you, Lord. And some folks think you're crazy, but they don't know the peace that you feel. To be able to stand and say, thank you, Lord, for your blessing on me. You're going to now make a decision about your life. Well, wait a minute, Brother Jimmy. I didn't, I didn't go. I didn't come to church now to make no life-changing decision. Every time you go to church, should be a life-changing decision to be made. That's what God established the church for. Uh, that's why Jesus built the church uh, so the lost could come and be saved and the saved could come together together uh, in the unity of the Spirit. The unity of the Spirit of God and work the work of God uh, and, and build a safe place. A safe place for those that are in the world that are being destroyed every day. 
to build a safe place for them and then to build a home for children that have no home. Uh, children to come uh, and, and to meet Jesus and to feel love like they've never known before. That's what God intends to happen here today. So as I close my part and the Lord opens up His part, will you let Him in to do a work in your life? Will you be thankful? Will you be the one out of the ten that turned back and went to the Master and thanked Him for what He's done for you? I, I promise you, I can be thankful for this past year. Listen, there's been some struggles and this and that. And that. That's part of life. But I still stand in the midst of everything that goes on with peace in my heart in knowing that I'm His and He's mine. And whatever happens down here, whatever goes on, God's got me. Amen. I'm His. You can make that same claim today and settle that if you're here and don't know Christ. You could know Christ today as your personal Savior. As your personal Savior where He comes into your life, into your children's life, into your family's life, and delivers your family out of darkness, out of the misery, out of hell, out of all the pain. You can do that today. Your opportunity to do so. For those of you that are already saved and have become complacent with the salvation, with the blessing and the miracle that God does in your life, you come today and thank Him for it and ask for a new batch of mercy. He's got a new batch mixed up for you today. Will you come today and ask Him for it? Father, as we close, God, this is your message, your people. God, you knew who were coming. You brought those that are lost here today, Lord. You brought them with anticipation, God, that they'd be saved. Lord, I thank you for all of those that you have brought this morning. God, and those that are lost, God, give them the strength, the courage uh, to step forward and, and ask Christ to save them today. Uh, Lord, that's the only answer uh, for the deliverer of their life, uh, for, for, for the pain, for the hurt, for the loneliness, for the hopelessness. God, that's the only answer, Jesus. And Lord, your children, God, that have drifted off. God, that no longer stand where they used to be. Uh, God, that have moved away from uh, where they're supposed to be with you. God, draw them back this morning. Have your way in each life in this room. And we'll pray to you for that in a mighty way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Will you come make a decision for Christ today? But if you need to come home, come home. Uh, if you're